Hello and welcome once again. Guys, let us start with the syllabus discussion. So, uh, on the first session, we are going to discuss about this workflow which we had already discussed in the you know, demo version that is analysis and design. What is the uh, basic uh, you know, definition of this analysis and design? Then uh, we'll have this you know, background color setup. We have two different types of background colors that is white background and black background that uh, will be showing you the basic unit setup. Right. After that, we have the concept of global coordinate system and local coordinate system that is GCS and LCS. I'll create a separate video, uh, you know, for this global and local coordinate system. Uh, then we'll start with the creating new project or setting up with project units. Uh, the graphic user interface uh, will know each and every details about the menu bar, toolbar, mode bar. The page control and all right the missing toolbars check that is if any toolbars will be missing we'll get to know about uh, with this command right then we'll get an idea about the keyboards sh uh, shortcut keys the different shortcut keys that are being used so uh, then we'll move to the structural modeling part wherein we have uh, the first topic as creating nodes using coordinate system and the snap node beam so we have two options one with the data entry part that is uh, with the excel format using x y and z uh, value that is the coordinate system otherwise the snap node or the grid that can also be used then we'll uh, know how to add beams that is there are different options like add beam from point to point then add beam using midpoint add beam by perpendicular intersection so all these different types you'll get to know okay then we'll move to this copy paste uh, and move nodes and beams right so if we create a single beam how we can copy uh, that beam to the other one so that we unnecessarily do not need to draw another beam right so, uh, then how uh, how to add beams using connect beam along xyz axis that is a command which we'll get to know in the course sessions. Okay, then we'll move to the next part that is uh, also a modeling part. Uh, how to create or generate plates that is adding surfaces or you can say adding slab in an RCC frame. Right, then we'll get to know the structural elements like the node cursor, the beam cursor, the plate cursor or the surface cursor. These cursors are being used for selection of these individual items right then we'll get to know how to check distance between two nodes or the distance or the you know uh, length of a particular member right uh, then we have these commands translation repeat circular repeat these commands will get to know these are actually very essential commands for the structural modeling right then we have uh, structural modification tools like insert node options or split beam option then if we want to merge two members how can we do that if you want to stretch a particular member or if you want uh, to intersect uh, two particular members which are crossing over that can also be done the rotate command the mirror command or uh, breaking beams at selected nodes that is creating different joints how to do that we'll discuss about that in the second session that is structural modeling after that uh, under the structural modeling we have few miscellaneous options that is introduction to the structural wizard so this structural wizard are some predefined models which are already there pre-installed in the stat process so if we use this structural wizard we can avoid the uh, structural modeling part right then we have uh, the snap node beam option that is the modification of the grid right uh, then how can we import autocad files into it and uh, last but not the least within the structural modeling tools we'll get to know about how to group different members under different categories right so sometimes we may have to use uh, different member groups like uh, groups based on uh, the beams the type of beams used 
uh, groups based on the load applications and etc. Right, then we'll move to the next topic that is views. So how to, uh, you know, generate different views, how to shift to different views using shortcut keys of the keyboard. Then uh, we'll get to know about how to uh, show a rendered view. Uh, we have already seen about the rendered view in uh, the demonstration video already, right? So after that, uh, we'll move to the select menu bar option wherein we'll get options like uh, beams parallel to plates parallel to uh, by range by group name so all these parameters could be used for selection of the members so after we are done with this uh, we'll move to the next part that is material constant and section property so we'll get to know how to apply different types of materials in different members like the section properties of rcc or steel properties how to apply them, how to do the modifications with them, right? Next part is the support part, how to create and how to assign supports uh, in different members and structures. Then next comes a very important part that is load calculation and assignment, right? So uh, in ascending order, we have to apply dead load, live load, right so all these are is 875 part 1 and 2 for each and every load applications or for each and every calculations we have to use the is codes right so once we are done with this uh, dead and live, uh, live load that is uh, the application of you know uh, self weight nodal load member load area load or floor load or you can say as uniform force uh, then you know a concentrated force right this type of load applications can be done then comes wind load application with the help of is 875 part 3 that is the wind code for uh, Indian standard right the design calculations according to the code then uh, will come up with the seismic loading application right from is 1893 2002 to 5 will do the calculations uh, we have the parameters, we'll consult the code and then we have to apply the seismic loading part. Then working with STAD editor. This is actually, you know, uh, the backend page of STAD wherein we can do some uh, programming so that we can avoid the manual structural modeling and a lot of other manipulations are also there while doing the analysis part, we can do use this style editor portion as a backend page, right? Then we have the post analysis part, right? So post analysis print, we will be getting the data uh, after we are done with the input data, like uh, the load applications, we will be checking the results. That is the shear force, bending moment, displacement, reactions that is the internal forces that have been generated we'll get to know about those in details with the graphical representation as well as the maximum and minimum values so after uh, the post analysis part let us uh, we'll move to this rcc design and steel structure design so under rcc design we'll get to know about designing rcc beam and column structure that is basically the frame structure and then uh, we'll move to the steel design portion wherein we'll uh, discuss about different uh, projects for both rcc and steel structure designing we'll discuss about different life projects so guys being a civil engineer i had already worked in the structural uh, designing uh, you know sector and i had an experience of working with the oil and gas industry and uh, this RCC industry as well. Uh, I have worked with uh, real estate industry in uh, you know RCC design. So I'll share the projects uh, along with so that you know it will be helpful for you guys. You can practice uh, this type of projects and uh, during the time of interview or uh, while doing some professional projects, this could be of some help for you, right? So uh, after that. We'll move to this foundation part. We have this isolated combined 
raft footing type of foundation and few miscellaneous structures will also get to uh, practice within this course curriculum. So now uh, after that we will give some projects, the life projects which I had already been discussed. Uh, you have to submit those projects in order to get the certificate. So guys we are who are already associated with this uh, software courses, they already know to get a certificate, you have to submit these projects, right? So uh, that will be all for the syllabus discussion. Now I'll show you the exercises which you are going to cover within this course curriculum. So let us just take a look on these exercises. So this type of uh, exercises we are going to cover up. These are the basic exercises. You can see drawing the beams, applying loads, right? These are a few basic exercises which we are going to practice. Then uh, after that, we are going to move with this, you know, uh, two storey, three storey, five storey buildings like this. Step by step will increase the level of difficulty. So like this, we are going to practice few structures. As you can see in these exercises, this is a water tank. will be given a, a you know, fixed capacity. Like uh, this quantity of liter is to be uh, supplied to a particular area. You have to design a water tank based on that, right? So this type of structures we are going to practice. This is a lift shear wall. Again, a building structure. This is a tower type of structure, two different types of towers we could practice. Uh, these are uh, portal frames as you already know, right? So uh, this is a you know, shade type of a truss type of structure. This is another of that, a shade, again a water tank. So this is about a residential apartment as you can see. This is a multi-storied building, right? Again, a shade type of structure. So all these projects we are going to cover up. This type of project. So that as I already told you, we'll be getting some practical experience out of this course structure. Not only you'll get to know about the tools and applications of the stack flow, but you'll get to know about how to apply, how to do this practical designing professionally. Right? So uh, that's all from this syllabus discussion let us start with the post session from the next videos thank you very much guys